That game was in the heart for ball. These two guys were in street clothes, and Khalid El Amin soon joined them on the bench with a third foul. Pick it up in the early second half. So Syracuse took over with those three stars in the bench. And seriously down low, rebounding. The Q's hitting the boards. Damone Brown gets the put back. Todd at 27. UConn could have used Mo Vaughn for a little rebounding help, but instead they decided to spend their money on Jose Offerman. UConn sloppy all night. Albert Mourning throw, Mooring throws the ball, ball away. Jim Calhoun in Mooring. More Syracuse inside, Ryan Blackwell. Two of his 13, part of a 10-0 Cuse run. Huskies would self-destruct throughout. Edmund Saunders throws the ball away. One of 18 UConn turnovers, Syracuse turning it on. Damone Brown, he had a team high 14. Syracuse bruises 59-42. So UConn lost for the first time this season and a host of streaks went and the whack as they went to the pit early on. New Mexico's Damian Walker knocks down a jumper. That hoop, the only field goal in the first 9.45 for Dave Bliss's club. 10-2 Utah. Andre Miller playing the terrific defense. He can do so many things. He can also dunk. Utah up by 10. Hano Medela working on his guy and going past him and throwing it down. Utah up big at the half, 34-18. Second half. New Mexico trying to scratch their way back in at Kenny Thomas. Getting loose inside, punching it. Lobos with an eight. Utah, way too strong. Medela, one more time. Head fake, driving, hanging, scoring. 16 for Medela and the Utes. Knock off New Mexico at the pit. It was our big, big Monday midnight snack in the whack, and the Lobos got eaten up. 57-39 the final. Utah extends its win streak to 12 games and improves to 7-0 in the conference. Lamont Long, 17 of his team's 39 points. And for the Lobos, it's their first loss in 17 home games this season, and just their second in their last 59 at the pit. K-State had lost 13 in a row to arch rival Kansas, and Kansas really been playing typical Jayhawk basketball lately. That changed. Good post defense by Chenoweth, and Pugh found Gregory. Nice little 18-5 run in the first half. Kansas up by eight. Second half, Jayhawks pouring it on. Gregory, who's been slumping, see the three and be the three. Kansas up by 20, and here's more from Gregory. Look at this pass from Jeff Boshi. I, I like that better than an alley -oop dunk. The timing was precise. Gregory was terrific. 16 points for him. Kansas easily 69-46. to 46. That's 14 in a row for the Jayhawks over the Wildcats. And it's the first 28. A little more in the last 12. Zerbiak hits a three, puts Miami up five. Three minutes later, drives, lays it in. Next trip down, more Wally Zerbiak. Three-pointer. Next trip down, Wally Zerbiak me. The hoop and the foul. Next trip down, Zerbiak double team. Toledo gets the idea. Zerbiak, so what? And the foul. He missed the free throw. Next trip down for three. 16 straight Miami of Ohio points to stretch a two-point lead to eight. Miami goes on to win 63-57. Zerbiak with 23. Greg Stempen that all scores with 25, but it wasn't enough for Toledo, which lost for only the third time in eight games against Miami. And what he get? Not much, because Cleves played 32 minutes. Spartans wiping the glass like the squeegee man early. Charlie Bell, uh-uh. Charlie Bell follows his own shot, gets his only bucket of the game. Spartans 19 offensive rebounds. Nittany Lions use some trickery to get back in it. The old inbounds play off the rear end of the other team play. Take another look. Titus Ivory gets the uh, <clears throat> assist from Antonio Smith. Ivory had 11 points. Second half pace picking up on both ends. Calvin Booth, Satin. Pure satin. So smooth. Booth, 18 points, 8 rebounds. But on the other end, Morris Peterson answers. It is a hard knock life. Peterson, 13 of his 17 in the second half. Late in the second half, Penn State down 3. Dan Earl, deep NBA range 3-pointer. Sports, Knight, Booyao. Earl, 3 of 4 from 3 land. Just over 2 minutes left. Ivory, it's actually Booyah. As a team, Nittany Lions, 6 of 12 from 3 land. Under a minute to go in the second half. Michigan State down three. Mateen Cleaves, they tried to play ahead him. He was hate proof. Ten seconds left. Mateen, first choice himself. He was only three of 11 shooting at that point, but top of the food chain. Take a second look. Breaking ankles, breaking hearts. Mateen, 14 points, five assists. He said later, if I had an open shot, I was taking it. Spartans win at 70 to 68. Spartans have now won eight in a row. As Peterson hits Doug Gottlieb on the back door in that backyard. Everybody sharing some old Funkadelic pin on the 8-track. People sipping Kool-Aid. It was cool. Uh, oh, yeah, Peterson had 18 points. Anyway, more ASU. Bryant 
Montanati banks it in for two. He had 14 points in 7 of 11 shooting. Iowa State trying to come back. Michael Nurse played doctor to Marcus Pfizer. Pfizer, 19 in the first half, a career high 32 for the game. Then second half, Nurse at night school earning a PhD. Picks off the pass to Stevie Johnson. Cyclones on a 9-2 run. They're within eight. But Peterson, who was just 0 for 3 from the field in the first half, getting medieval in the second. 16 points after intermission, said Adrian, I don't know about taking charge. I was just trying to get off the slide. Oklahoma State hangs on to win it. See, Tennessee was coming off a 36-point win over Alabama, which beat Arkansas and Fayetteville by seven two weeks back. However, the last time the Vols and Hogs hooked up in Bud Walton Arena two years ago, you needed a calculator to tabulate Arkansas's early lead. The Hogs jumped out 24 to 1 en route to a 21-point tail whipping of the Vols. Sweet! Was this ugly? Chris Walker comes up with the steal, but he even loses the handle. Arkansas had 14 steals. Aaron Green for three. No. Chris Hathaway, no. C.J. Black, no. Black now looking to drive the lane, but Black loses the handle. One of 25 Tennessee turnovers. More sloppiness. Everybody, it's a scrum. It's a scrum. You said scrum in hockey, though. Well, it's a basketball scrum. No okay. one's going to get it. Yeah. Put Nolan Richardson through 40 minutes of hell. And the referee pointed. Second half, the Razorbacks pulling away, though. Kareem Reed dishing. Derek Hook jamming. Hood finished with 15. Brandon Dean finds a wide open Reed for three. Arkansas cruising by the final of 69 to 52. Tennessee just 26 points below their SEC scoring average in this game. That's all. Tennessee shot just 30 percent from the field. Despite his hogs shooting only 38 percent from the field, Coach Richardson was pleased with the defense. This was our best defensive effort of the season. NC State at Georgia Tech, Matt Kutcher honored before the game. Alvin Jones was not. Starting center benched late for practice. With Jones, even with him in the game, Damon Thornton had his way. Down the lane, NC State up 25-18 at the half, but they're down by two with 18 ticks left. Justin Ganey for three. 51 of 50 NC State, but Ganey was not done. The defensive play now to wrap it up. The three-pointer win it, and the defensive play to ice it. 51 to 50, that bucket didn't count. Was your final. NC State, which had lost its previous four ACC road games. With 15, Craig Eschrick sets up the D off the Pittsburgh miss. Tres Kilpatrick, who had nine rebounds, finds Damon Jackson. Kilpatrick also had five assists. Play of the game, Anthony Perry. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. Perry, 10 points. Hoya shoot 50%. So, let's see. Pitt loses a coach. They almost get hijacked, and then they goes for the lay-in. He got mugged along the way. Didn't matter. He scored 21. Knowles up 11. South Florida's next possession. Watch Cedric Jenkins. He misses. Then he gets stripped naked. PG rated 13. Delvin Harrington to Ron Hale. Hale, yes. He had 16 points. Bulls down by 14. More Knowles. Up 18. Arrington steals the pass. Then getting his behind the back swerve on to Baker. Arrington had 10 assists. FSU stayed hot. Hale, three, done. Knows a school record, 19 of 23 from the field in the second half. They win it. Blocking Charlie Wills, four inches his taller. Michael Lewis feeds Luke Jimenez. Top of the key or the food chain. Top of the food chain. Thank you. 11 point lead at the half for Indiana. William Gladness with more defense to steal to Jimenez. Now to Michael Lewis for the land. Wisconsin, however, cut a large Indiana lead down to four, but more First defensive shot, stoppage shot. by Indiana. Turnover there. Under a minute to go. Hoosiers up nine. Ty Calderwood can't shake. Luke Recker. Nice tight D. Long shot. Dick Bennett's squad. Seven-game win streak over as the Badgers held scoreless in the final three minutes of the game. Of his team's late defensive stand, Coach Knight said, at that point, it was about as good as we've had all season. Rob Turner provided the offense, a season-high 22 for him. As for the Badgers, this was their first loss in six games against a top-25 team, and only the second time all year they've allowed more than 70 points. Illinois at Minnesota on hand, Bobby Jackson, former Gof Golden Gopher star, current Timberwolf. And Quincy Lewis made him proud off the steal. Goes in, caps a 14-0 run for the Gophers. Minnesota by 12 at the half. Second half, Kevin Clark to Lewis in transition. Lewis and Clark. Lewis had 28 points for the game. Showing he can pass two off the Lewis miss. He gets it back and finds Nick Simville, who puts it in reverse. 
Minnesota cruising 75 to 63. Lewis is 28, one point less than his average over the last six games, said Quincy. Basketball, he made his presence felt. Here is his presence off the miss. Still in the first, Scott Pullman to Porter. Fade away, fade away. Scored all nine of his points in an Auburn 28 to 10 run that we're showing you now. Porter here misses, but Bryant Smith has his back. Smith had 15, Auburn demolishing South Carolina, 76-48. Auburn's now off to its best start in 92 years, people. 21-1, and one, said Coach Cliff Ellis. It's a very smooth machine. It's really awesome. Doc Robinson, 16. Mac McGadney, 14, as the Tigers won their fourth straight and ended a three-game losing streak to the Gamecocks. Ole Miss at LSU. That's all 6 foot 11 inches of LSU junior Jabari Smith. And all six foot 11 stopper, inches couldn't stop with Tyrell Williams here. dunking it hard oh, over him. Ole Miss up 11 at the half, but LSU down 10 in the second half. Coming to look out, here comes Smith. Oh, Jabari finished with 18 on the night, LSU within eight, but Smith and everyone else couldn't stop the Rebels inside. Here's Williams hanging in the air, lays it past Smith. Ole Miss polishing off LSU by the final of 82 66. Keith Carr. Six foot one inch NCAA high jump champion. And I'm really gonna do it with it. Serious hops, one of his 10 steals in the game. Second half, Horns trying to put AM away. Wagner again, grand theft larceny. Another steal to Chris Clack for two of his 12. AM 30 turnovers. AM coach Melvin Watkins. Oh, he needs a hug. Texas would win it 71 59. DePaul, second half, just over two minutes left. UNCC down two. Diego Guevara with the bounce pass to Joby. Thomas Thomas stroking it. He had 14 points all off the bench. Under 20 seconds to go, DePaul down three. Kerry Hartfield brings it down, tries to bounce pass. It goes out of bounds. Ref says out on DePaul. Pat Kennedy needs therapy. After conferring, the ref say out on UNC Charlotte. Bobby Lex needs a shrink referral from Kennedy. DePaul gets another chance. Ball stolen off the inbounds pass. Guevara and UNC Charlotte hold on to win it 66-61. Told you about Joby. Indoor we go where it was the Shane Battier show. Averaged only eight points a game coming in. Did not on this night. Draws the charge and Obini Ikizi, who picked up his second foul right there early on. Now playing some D off the pass. The rips it off and jams it home. Duke up 27 to 16. Now Battier for three. The Cameron crazies are going nuts. 12 points in the first half for Battier. We're still in the first half. Enough time for him to sneak in. One more charge to take. This one on Terrence Morris. Battier and Duke led 50 to 40 at the break. Second half, we show Battier doing the more subtle thing. Spot shadowing him, screening down low to open up Trajan Langdon for three. Who says we only show dunks? 58-43 is the game now. Battier passing one of his three assists to Nate James for the hoop. Duke by 19. Battier pouring it on. He had all four of his threes. He finished with a career-high 27. Under eight minutes left in the game. Steve Francis going for the hoop. Battier hustles back, perhaps committing an intentional foul. Francis committing the technical foul. Lighten up, Francis. Just over five minutes left. Battier still playing like they're down two. They're up by a ton. He blocks Laurent Profit's shot and then collects the ball and calls timeout while going out of bounds. Didn't get the timeout call, but he gets an A for effort as Duke wins 95 to 77. Another 18 point tail whipping of Maryland for Duke, which at 22 and one is off to its best start ever. They've won 17 straight, 34 in a row at home. At for the 233rd time. Second half, 111 left. Chris Weems stop, drop, shut him up, open up, shot. First Stanford basket in more than 11 minutes. Weems at 15, Stanford up two. Same score, 57 seconds left. Michael Gill threw up through off balance junk. Gill just 4 14 shooting. 7.2 seconds left. You know, Cal only shot 36% in the game because Gill missed the three. Thomas Kilgore, clank. Carl Boyd there for the foul, but Boyd too late. Refs wave off the basket that would have tied it up. Take another look. The spot shadow shows the clock will be at zero. Ball is still in Boyd's hands. We have fancy editing equipment, so why not use it? Good call. Ben Braun's Golden Bears come up short. Stanford wins it 57-55. Cardinal win its fifth straight against Cal, but they have the first half. Tulane trying to play a hate Fletcher. Hate a proof. 
He lost his starting job early in the year, but he said, basically, I'm just trying to spark his team. Since you have nine at the half, second half, the spark blowing up. Fletcher scored eight straight points, four straight baskets, just wiping the offensive glass. More Fletcher, more Boards, more being the bomb. 14 points, eight rebounds off the bench for Fletcher. Bearcats win it 82 to 63. Since he wins their 30th straight home game, fourth longest streak in the country. Tulane stayed close most of the game, which prompted some second guessing among the Bearcats. Said Pete Michael, who had a career high 12 rebounds, we're not playing as hard. I don't know why. Maybe it's not as important to us. Red Storm forward Ron Artest told his teammates some of the Kane players were pointing at St. John's, laughing. Says Artest, they were disrespecting us. I'm trying to play hard at the end. They're just laughing. We'll see who's laughing now. We'll see if it worked. Second half, Tim James had to leave with an ankle injury. Ron Artest's ankle was fine. We want him to prove it. Oh, Silk. Artest, 22 points, part of a 10-2 run. James would return, so would Miami. James to Johnny Hemsley. Don't play a hate. Congratulate. Hemsley had 29 points. He was also 12 of 13 from the foul line. After St. John's turnover, Miami down one under 30 left. Elton Tyler looking like Elton Brand. Tyler, 12 points. Last chance for St. John's. Miami up three, seven ticks left. Artest, who was just six of 13 from the foul line, flanks a three. Artest said later, it was my foul shooting, not the team's foul shooting. That was the worst. Miami holds on to beat St. John's, 73 to 70. Canes, for only the second time in school history, have beaten a top 10 team on the road. Canes outscored the Red Storm 14 to three over the last five and a half minutes. St. John scored their last basket with five minutes, 37 seconds left in the game. Rutgers at Villanova, first half all Nova all the time. Brooks Sales feeds Malik Allen. Malik eats up the paint. He has 22 Wildcats up 17. Second half, Rutgers rolling. Dante Jones. Ooh, Bobby, I did not know you could do it like that. Jones, 24 points and 8 of 12 shooting. Late second half, Nova up 5. Malik Allen in the post, and Kidd is doing work. 10 of his 22 came down the stretch. Under two to play. Rutgers down three. Jeff Greer in the baseline. Jeff, you've been hoodwinked, bamboozled. You didn't land on Brian Lynch. Brian Lynch landed on you. Kevin Bannon's like, what, no foul? Five Rutgers players scored in double figures. Didn't matter.